Hi, I'm here for Shakespeare, and I'm, I know that I often have this lighting for these videos because I'm in my room, and there's just the overhead light, and it's doing this thing that makes it look like I'm under some sort of, like, god light or heavenly thing, and that's totally not my intention. This is just because I don't have a really good recording set up right now. Anyway, today we are in Act 3, Scene 3. We get to move on a little bit because Orlando and Rosalind have made this pact that he's going to come every day and try to woo her, and in that respect, she's going to try to turn him off of love so much that he doesn't love her anymore, but really she is sort of like testing the waters and wants to see how much he actually loves her. I don't think she really wants to cure him. She, it's just, it's pretense, it's flirting, it's lovely. So anyway, while they're all living off in the forest, Touchstone the Clown has become a bit randy. And he finds this woman named Audrey and decides that he will marry her because how else is he going to get some unless he marries her? So he's talking with her and talking about how, um, you know, a beautiful woman who's chaste is just kind of, that's just mean, that's a, a waste. So, it, like, it's only good to be chaste if you're ugly because then you at least have something to offer. And it's really antiquated and and whatever, whatever, full of lots of entendre, double, triple, quadruple, all that sort of fun stuff, until finally he's like, so we can get married now, and I have this priest coming, Sir Oliver Martex, he's going to come, and he's going to marry us, and she's like, oh, the gods give us joy, and he says, amen. A man may, if he were, have a fearful heart stagger in this attempt, for here we have no temple but the wood, no assembly but home beasts. But what though, courage, as horns are odious, they are necessary. It is said many a man knows no end of his goods. Right, many a man has good horns and knows no end of them. Well, that is the dowry of his wife. <laughs> it is not of his own getting. Horns, even so poor men alone know. No, the noblest deer hath them as huge as the rascal. Is the single man therefore blessed? No, as a walled town is more worthier than a village, so is the forehead of a married man more honorable than the bare brow of a bachelor. And by how much defense is better than no skill, by so much it is a horn more precious than to want. Here comes Sir Oliver Martext. Sir Oliver Martext, you are... Well met. Will you dispatch us here under this tree, or shall we go with you to your chapel? And I'm just going to say that talking about a man's horn, yep, that's what we're talking about. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Mwah.